first, uh, I'm going to start first by explaining what is it, the, what they call Thanksgiving address. Actually, Thanksgiving address isn't really the proper way to, to say we're talking about. Uh, in the Mohawk language, um, we call it Ohondo Galihodekwa. Ohondo Galihodekwa. That's what we call it. But many people, when they speak English, they refer to it some as the Thanksgiving address, which isn't wrong, but it's not exactly word to uh, literally. Uh, I think English, it's not the actual meaning of it. Some people call it an opening prayer, and that's not wrong either, but it's not exactly right either. But the correct way is to say in the Mohawk language, Ohondo Kalihodekwa. And if you literally translate that, it means Ohondo, that word Ohondo means in a front of or before. Gali, Gali, Galiwa, Galiwa means matters or issues that are important before in the front of matters or issue of importance. A dekwa is what you say before you discuss matters of importance uh, or big issues. And so this, uh, this kind of speech is a spiritual speech. And uh, the Haudenosaunee people, which are the Oneidas and Onondagas and Cayuga, Seneca, and Tuscarora, say this before any council meeting, be it a nation meeting or a grand council, which is the United uh, Nations of the Iroquois Grand Council. They, they will say that spiritual speech before they begin their meeting. And then when they finish their meetings, they will say another, they will say almost the same thing, the tense of closing that it has finished. And so they will repeat it, except in a tense that it is finished at the end. And so uh, my uncle used to say, uh, for us younger ones uh, that are learning about it, he would say, it's like a sandwich with two bread and you put in the middle. So you open up with the creator and then the people do their, their business and, uh, and then the next bread is the other bread that makes the sandwich, it's the closing. And so you have to have those in order to have an official meeting. And uh, whenever there are uh, social dances in any of the longhouses of the Haudenosaunee, Haudenosaunee people, the spiritual uh, words to open up officially and when they are done the speaker will also close it to conclude the social dance if uh, parents are going to have a meeting to discuss the school where their children goes they will also do the same spiritual speech uh, to open up their discussion because it involves their children's future. And when they finish the meeting for the school, they will use the same speech to close it. So it is not only just used by chiefs or social dancers, but it's used on any matters that are of important matters or issues. And that's the way the real Haudenosaunee, Haudenosaunee people, do and use it. Now, this, this uh, things, these are spiritual talk. Is uh, perhaps the most sacred, the most uh, important of all the things that the Haudenosaunee people has. And when I think about it, it is the same thing this uh, 
teacher we're going to be talking about is when a baby was conceived in a woman and now the baby is wrapped up in the mother's womb being nurtured and everything needed for that baby to grow is in that mother and being given to that that little baby that was conceived and so by the time nine months is done he is a human being now in nine months ready to breathe the air of the mother earth and the atmosphere was given everything by the mother and the father for nine months to become a human being so this speech of the is like that baby that was just conceived and for nine months have been taught or being wrapped with the fluids and all the nutrients of the mother and father to become a human in nine months. That's what it's equivalent to. Another way to describe it is if it's cold, cold time and you use a Pendleton woolen blanket to make yourself warm and comfortable. It is the same thing as that speech of the Holy Gaiwadekwa. It is that Pendleton blanket that comforts you and brings warmth to you so that you can live. And so that's what uh, this Ohonda Gaiwadekwa or what people as the Thanksgiving address is sort of about. It is the foundation of our existence as a human being in the world. And I'm going to give you an example uh, for clarification so people will understand that it isn't, it isn't just a Thanksgiving address. It is, it is uh, almost like an octopus, many lakes. It is a big thing. And um, I will tell you that um, just a few words, I guess, in, in a Mohawk language. ne <laughs> What that means is at the beginning of time, the Creator he used the dirt from the Mother Earth and the water from the big water. And he molded this water in dirt and he made a dolls the way the creator looks like, the way the twins of the night and the day, whom we call Sawiskala and Darun Hawago, the two twin brothers. One is representing of the day and the other is representative of the night. 
and the creator and that power of the twin used the dirt and the water of the big water to form the human beings in the form of dolls. And then he used the fire to cook it, like you would put a biscuits dough into the fire or oven to make it cook. And that's what he did with this dolls that he made in a fire to make it live or become created. And then when he finished, he blew in their mouth three times. And when he blew in their mouth three times, their eyes blinked and their arms moved and their legs moved and they became mobile and they became alive with the three breaths of life. And that's why all the Ludinoshuni people use three as a sacred number for everything that we do. Everything that we do. There's a repetition, repetition, repet, what do you call it now? They repeat it three, three times all the time. Almost everything, what we do that is sacred. Even when people passes away in our, they always say one doesn't go by themselves. There will be three. When one leaves, two others will leave. Three. And uh, so if you will study with the Dinoshuni people, you will see that they repeat three all the time in everything. So now, when the creator finish and the twins, they finish, he, he stood men and women up that he made from the dirt and the water after blowing in their mouth three times and making them live to be born on this planet Earth. And then he began to instruct them of what the Creator wants, the way the Creator thinks. He put it in their, transmitted into their mind, that man, women. And he said, now, and so what twachiliak? So twachiluni or no? That means now you will make uh, more fire, and the sparks from your fire will be made. What they mean is we call family. Kahuachile, it means a fire. That's our word for family. The sparks of the fire goes, that's the children that will be born from that woman and that man. It means you will produce many spark, uh, many kids. And that's the symbolic uh, of our way we talk. And so he began to tell us what he thinks the creator. He transmitted what he wants to know and to do and to believe in. He put it in their head. And when they make many children, many sparks, then they will continue that those, those teachings. But what I want to do right now is uh, take the called Honda Kodekwa which is the instructions that the creator, when he made the humans, took when he stood up the man and the woman to be on the earth, and when they are to make families, what they are to teach their offspring. For as long as the sun shines, as long as the river runs, as long as the grass grows, they will teach this to the next generations. So it is extremely important. This is a kind of a talk, a talk. It is the foundation of the human people's existence in the universe that we live. And so 
that same speech became the Ahonda Gai Hwadekwa. What he told that man and that woman, the first human beings. That's where it came from, of creation and creation. And it's easy to see that. But well, at this moment, is I'm going to give you an example by using one of my six kids. Because when one of your children is born, if you're a Haudenosaunee people or a Ngwehungwe person, that means a real human. When your offspring are born, be them girls or little boys, babies, you will repeat the same thing what the Creator told the first man and woman at the beginning of this world. That shall never stop. I'm going to do that as if my daughter was born the way all fathers and uncles have to do when their nephews or daughters or sons are born. It comes from the Honda Gai Hodeko. So it does go to chiefs' meetings or big important meetings, but it goes the most to brand new babies that are born within seconds after they wipe the mucus of birth from their nose and their passageway of breathing. They don't even clean the blood from their birth, and the father holds the baby or the uncle holds the baby. If it's the father is not there, then the matrilineal from the mother's side, it will be his duty to do that. So I'm going to recite some of this way my oldest daughter was born to give you an example. But that is the same speech that the creator gave to the first humans that were made. And all the little Nashuni have been doing this since the beginning of humankind never stopped. And that's where Thanksgiving comes from. And so at first, the father or the uncle who will hold a brand new baby just seconds after that baby was born. wipe the birth mucus from the mouth and the nose so he can breathe, so she can breathe. And so now they give me the baby, they wrap up and they give me the baby, not babies yet, and the baby as well. So I hold the baby now and I hold it up, hold the baby up. And I say, in my language, Creator, I thank you because you sent my daughter to be born today. My Creator, my wife who carried the baby for nine months and she gave birth and she struggled for the baby to be born, but she is in good health and she is well after giving birth. And my daughter is also well. She made it through the birthing process and she breathes now the air of the earth. And here first, as the father of my daughter, I want to thank you for sending my little daughter to be born. And my creator, I thank you that you safely, you made it safe, the birth of my, my wife, and my daughter, thank you, Creator. Many thank yous. And now, my Creator, I want you to know, and my little baby girl, I want me. I'm your father. And you have arrived here on the earth from the Creator's land. And while you are here breathing the air of this earth, it's different from where you came from. 
Creator sent you here. And while you are here on this earth and breathing this air, the women from where you will come have chosen the name Gaji Jahawi. And the name Gaji Jahawi will be given to you. It, I'm now giving it to you. The name Gaji Jahawi that, that came from the woman, your mother, and all your female relatives. They chose this name for you. And then you say that name three times to the baby. That her, and that will be her name for as long as she lives. That's what you say to her. Then you say, my creator, I hold my daughter, brand new little baby girl, strong and healthy. Thank you. Uh, my creator, I want you to know that the woman relatives of my little daughter have chosen the name Gaji Jahawi, and that will be the name that she will carry while she walks this earth, while she lives on the mother earth. And so creator, I want you to know my daughter's earth name is Gaji Jahawi. And my creator, I want you to help Gaji Jahawi as she lives. And I don't know how many days you have allowed for her that she's going to live on the earth. But I know how many days she will be privileged to live on the earth. My daughter, Gaji Jahawi. And you make sure you tell the creator, repeat three times your, my daughter's name. And you say, my creator, every day, I want you, if you will, to help my daughter to live and to be happy and in, be in peace. And then when you're finished, you say to your daughter, I say, Gajir, the creator sent you here to our family. And we're going to take care of you and help you to live. But my daughter, Gajit Dahawi, I want you to never to forget the Creator sent you here. And I want you to, as you live, as many days as you will walk the earth, always remember the power of our Creator and that you will always respect and love our Creator, my Gajit Dahawi. And so now, Creator and my daughter, Gajit Dahawi, I have formally introduced you together so that you can begin your relationship and your life. And then now you say, and now Gaji Jahawi, I ask you to continue to listen. I now want you to listen. Mother Earth. The creator made you to be the mother of all living things. Mother Earth, I want you to know that the creator sent my little daughter and her name by the women. They said her name will be Kajit Dahawi. Now she is born and she will walk upon your sacred body. So Mother Earth, I tell you, my name, her earth name, is Gaji Jahawi. And Mother Earth, as you have helped me and my family and everybody before, before me throughout the years, since the beginning of time, Mother Earth, I ask you also to give everything that my daughter Gaji Jahawi needs to live happy and a good life, that you will take care of her as you have taken care of me and all my relatives beginning of time. So now, Ajit Jahawi, this uh, Mother Earth is your mother and my mother, the mother of all living things. I want you, my daughter, Ajit Jahawi, never to forget your mother, the Earth. I want you to never to forget to respect and to be grateful to your Mother Earth. I want you to love your Mother Earth as long as you will be living and walking on her body that you will always respect her. 
my daughter Gaji Chahawi and Mother Earth, I have formally introduced you together to begin your relationship for as long as Gaji Chahawi will live. And now I face my daughter, I ask you to continue to listen. And now to the waters that's in the river, the waters that's in the ponds and lakes and the ocean. He made this the, all these waters and he made them living. And he put a spirit and a soul in the water. And he told the water that they will run in the rivers and the streams and the ocean waves. And every day the waters will quench our thirst. And when we are sick, the water will be made into medicine to us to drink and be healed. And when our body needs purification, the water it will do that for us. And so the water is living. That's why it moves in the rivers and the waves of the ocean forever. And so waters of the world, I introduce you today to my brand new little daughter who was just born. Her name is Kajit Chahawi. And I hope like you did to me and all my relatives of the past, that others as you have done to me. I hope also waters that you will help Kajit Chahawi when she needs the food, you will be there to cook food, prepare medicine for her, and help her in every way. Waters of the world. My daughter's name is Kajidawi. Then when you have told the water three times your daughter's name, your brand new daughter, now you talk to your daughter and you say, Kajidawi, the creator made the water. It is a living entity. It has a spirit and a soul, like you and I do. And I want you, when you are thirsty, that you will, your thirst will be quenched by the waters of the world. And when you need to make food or medicine, the water will be there for you. My daughter, Katyi I want you forever, never to disrespect the waters of the world. I want you to, to love her, the waters of the world as long as you will live. And the water will always help you too. And so, Kaji Chahawi and the waters of the world, I have now formally introduced you together to begin your relationship in this world. And then you go on now to the garden. The three sisters, corn and beans and squash and potatoes and turnips and everything else. They go where the cushion vegetables, three sisters, the corn, the beans, and the squash. And you tell them, you say, my daughter was born today. I carry her. And I want you to know her name is Kajit Tahawi. Then again, three times, you tell everything in the garden that grows what your daughter's name, three different times. And then when you're finished that, you tell your daughter, I want to know the things that grow in the garden, that corn, the beans, and the squash are the three sisters that are the leaders of everything in the garden. And from there will be Gilhekwa, means our sustenance comes from there. They are the sustenances of our life, the energy givers that makes us live. Creator made it like that. And so, Ajit Jahawi, I want you to everything that grows in the gardens, the three sisters, their leaders. And you say that three times, the name, her name to them. Then you say, now, everything that grows in the garden, I want you to always respect them and honor them and be thankful to them. And in our nation and in our longhouse, our faith keepers and our leaders and grandmothers, our elders, periodically have festivals for the beans and the corn and the squash and all the things that grows in the garden to make them strong, to honor them. 
And I want you to be always a part of that. So I always respect all the gardens of the world. So now I have introduced you formally, Gaji Jahawi, and all the garden spirits that grows all over the garden of the world. Now you can begin your relationship on your left. And then you go on next one to the animal world. You call it Gundilyu. Gundawiniyu, Gundilyu means the animals that are free. They're not caged or they're not in the barnyard, but they're in the woods, in the swamps, in the desert, in the mountains, in the valleys. And of all those animals, for the, for the Nishuni people, the deer was chosen. Peter, of all the animals, big and small. So now you tell the deer, who's the leader of the animal world, you say to them, the Gundilyu, means my daughter was born. And her name, the women chose in the matrilineal, is Kaji Jahawi. So to the deer in all the animal world, I want you to know that is her name, my daughter. She was just born. And whenever my daughter will need help from you, as you have helped me and my family through the years, that you will also help Ajit Dahawi in the same way. You say to them three times her name so they will know her. Then you say when you finish that, Ears goes kanunto. That's a means in all the animals. Kajijahawi, I want you never to abuse the animals. And if you need them, you only need, use them when you need them, and never more than that. And always honor and respect them. And if you need them, you will offer tobacco for them and tell them what you need, and then they will sacrifice for you as they have for our people. And so now, Gaji Jahawi, I want to protect the animals and honor them and never forget them. And if you do, they will always be there to help you in your life. And so now, Gaji Jahawi and the deer and the animals, I have formally introduced you together so you can begin your relationship in this world, this Mother Earth. And then the next one, you talk to the medicines that grows. Now, red willows, wild gingers, cedar tree, all kinds of things like that. And you say to them, my daughter was born. Her name is Kaji Jahawi. And again, you tell them the name three times. And then when you finish, you tell Kaji Jahawi, the brand new born baby that the medicine is there, creator put it there in case sickness comes to you or to you in the future. If that happens, you can go see the medicine that grows in the swamp or in the woods in the forest or in the valleys or by the river's edges. And you will leave tobacco for them and you will tell the medicine what kind of sickness brings discomfort to your life. And then you will ask them for help. And because the creator made them to do that, they will gladly go with you, you or your sick family. And that is the nature of medicine. And so medicine of the world, I tell you, Gaji Jahawi, my daughter was born, and this is her name. So when she needs you someday, if she needs you someday, you will know her, her identity, and who she is, because I have now told you. You make sure you tell them three times what her name is. And then when you finish, you tell Gajit Jahawi, the medicine is whenever you need them in the future. If you should ever get sick, you will go see them, and you will tell them what kind of sick you got, why you need them, and you will ask them for their help, and you will leave tobacco for them. And they tell them the creator gave them the power to heal people 
And that's what you're following, what our grandfathers and grandmothers told us. So, Vajita Hawi, I want you to always respect all, all the men that rose in the woods, in the swamps, along the water's edges, wherever. You will respect them. And if you do this, the medicine will always be there to help you when you are in need of their help. So now, Gaji Jahawi, to you in the medicine, I have now introduced you formally. So now you can begin your relationship. As long as the Creator said, how many days you can live on the Mother of the Earth. And then you go on. Next one is to the trees, to the maple tree. You do the same thing. Then you go on the next one to the birds, to the eagle, and you tell them and introduce them. And you tell three times your daughter, your newborn's name. All the way to the thunder, to the four sacred wind, to the old brother's son, to the grandmother, the moon, to the stars, to the, then to the creator. And nothing you don't miss that brings you and gives you and nourishes your life. You introduce your newborn and the relationship that they will have forever. And so that's, that's uh, the original Thanksgiving. Because that's the same spiritual talk that the creator and the twins uh, told when they made the first humans out of dirt, of the mother earth, and put the fire from the sun's life in them. And they breathe, and they blink their eyes. And then he put the brains of our creator, he transmitted into them forever, never to forget. And that's why in every longhouse of the Haudenosaunee people, we still dance for the medicine, we still dance for the trees, we still dance and sing and feed Mother Earth for the water and for everything that brings us and give us life. So, uh, that's sort of the history of the Thanksgiving, what they call Thanksgiving, but it's not really called a Thanksgiving. It's called Ohundo the things you say before you discuss or entertain anything of importance or issues of importance. And that's our relationship. Knowledge, what's given according to my uncles and grandparents, this what I just shared with you was given to every human at the beginning of the world, to the white men, to the black men, to the yellow men, to the Indian people. It was given to all of us. It's called the original instructions. But over the years, uh, my uncle says, many people forgot the creator and mother relationship, become blind to it, and they began to use their own head and push the creator and mother earth aside. And then they made man-made things called religions. And they excluded the mother earth. They excluded the creator excluded the thunders, they excluded the fire, they excluded the sun, and went on their own. And it's in trouble. Water is now almost hard to find. Air is not clean anymore. Mother Earth has been poisoned. Even the seeds from the food in the garden is contaminated. And pretty soon, because people forgot all of this, they don't stop until it's almost going to be too late. And so, I don't know if that's why the Nishuni and Lakota, Cheyenne, or original people all over the world were attacked in our ways of understanding the universe, were attacked and almost completely destroyed. And to give you an example of that, that's why they made residential schools where thousands of our kids were kidnapped from us. And then they were made to forget their instructions the way I'm just doing. 
but a lot of my great grandmothers and grandfathers were stubborn. Their heads were made like diamond. No matter how many colonization came or how many missionaries came, they say we're not going to forsake the creator is teaching what he told us and put it in our head when our great-great-grandma and great-great-grandfather were made from the dirt of Mother Earth and the waters of every water of the earth. So that is the, what we call it. Some people call it Thanksgiving. Some people call it opening prayer or whatever. But uh, that's what I share with you. I oh, hope oh, people understand now the importance of Thanksgiving. It's what's going to save us. It's what guides us to how we're supposed to be, behave and how we the sacredness of life in this universe that we live. So I want to say thank you for allowing me the time to explain this. Because in years before, nobody wants to listen to the pagan, heathen, Indian. And now you let me talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tommy. I appreciate that. You, you've given us that perspective. It's a, it's a new one for me. Um, I'd like to say hi to everybody. Uh, my name is John. Uh, I'll be hosting this uh, little series of uh, talks with Tommy. Um, I hope this is the first one of many that will be coming about on a lot of different subjects that are, for me, are, would be talking about subjects where the integration of white American culture can interact with Indian culture. And, and one of the things that we can learn from this, from these people who've been living on this part of Mother Earth now for over 10,000 years, living quite quite well in harmony and doing quite well um, until we came along and kind of took over and decided we were gonna do things our own way. Um, I think anybody who's lived through the past five or six years in particular can see that the situation in our world right now is kind of dire. I mean, um, the pollution that exists in the world is quite remarkable. Um, earth is burning up. Uh, like Tommy said, it's, I mean, it's really hard to find clean water nowadays. Um, so that, and if you think about it, you know, earth, air, fire, and water, we can't live without any of these elements for very long. I mean, stop breathing and see how long you can last. Stop drinking water, maybe you can last two weeks. Stop eating, maybe a couple of months. You know, and if you if you live in the northern part and if the sun wasn't shining, then nothing that we know of would ever exist. So these four beings, which are really consciousnesses, different levels of consciousness, we have to live with them. We have to live in harmony with them or else the world we end up creating will not be a very good place to live in. So one thing I, one intention that I wanted to put out to folks in the course of all of these um, talks is that I would really like what we portray to people to be based upon the principles of truth, love, and compassion. Because there's a lot of anxiety, greed, and hate in the world, and that really needs to be balanced out by some teachings that are in what I see as original teachings that can help us understand how we can take these, all of this stuff that's going on in the world inside and still we have to deal with it. But what can we do to keep on recentering ourselves so that we can make our, the lifestyle that we want to create to be more harmonious with mother earth. Um, now, one of the best people uh, I've ever met that has a really good handle on that is my good friend, John Stokes here. Uh, I met Johnny back in 1985 when I went to Tom Brown's tracking school and um, we hit it off right away and I've been hanging out with him on and off over the years. It's been a little while since I last saw him, but Johnny has a, one of the few people I've known who has consistently 
taking these teachings and especially the Thanksgiving address and the meaning of that and kept it going and integrating that through all the teachings that he's done. Uh, he runs the tracking projects, project out of Corrales, New Mexico. Uh, anybody, you should check that out. It's trackingproject.org. Um, but I'd like to turn it over to Johnny now. Um, and if you, John, if you could talk a little bit about how you've been able to integrate the Thanksgiving address into the teachings that you have and how that's actually helped you in your life. Okay. Well, I need to say first how well Tom's looking today. Mr. Porter, what a honor it is to be here with you. And uh, John, thank you for putting this together, this series of talks. And I think I'm here because uh, the Thanksgiving or the Oando Kalewadekma is the words in the beginning. And I'm here because I've been using them uh, as a way of opening every gathering that we do with the tracking project. By way of history, I'd just like to say that uh, what was happening at Akuzasne uh, in the community that Tom comes from, uh, there was a paper called the Akuzasne Notes. And one of them came into my hands and I uh, showed it to the Aboriginal people in Australia that I was teaching at a college. And they were dazzled at the consciousness that was being portrayed in that newspaper. And they said to me, um, those guys, they know how to say what we feel. We don't know how to put it down into words, but they do. And uh, you, you need to bring us more of this. So I actually arranged a meeting and I went back to the United States for some other purposes. And I went to Akwazasne to meet the Mohawk people. And that's where I met Jake Swamp and his wife, Judy. I met Ron LaFrance and I went to the notes office and I met Jeannie Shenandoah and uh, made friendships because the Mohawk people were also terribly interested in the Aboriginal people. And Ron LaFrance said, could you bring us some maps of who they are and what's the name of their uh, tribes? Because we can't get a picture of who they are and where they live. So I became kind of like a messenger boy, um, taking information back and forth from Adelaide, Australia to Akuzasne. And that was 1970. Uh, uh, eight to about 1984. And, uh, and I began to learn as much as I could about uh, Onkwe Honwe uh, people and culture. And I learned too that there's a global indigenous network and uh, indigenous leaders go to these meetings and they talk to each other and they share. So um, there's a lot of knowledge of each other. So a Maori could speak to you about what's happening at Akwazasne or what's happening in Alice Springs because they met an elder from that place. And so I became a part of a network of something very different from anything I had ever um, done before. I was intrigued with tracking. I was intrigued with the science of tracking because the Aboriginal people, and Tom and I have never even had a chance to discuss this, they were only waking up to the fact that they had all been taken away, that they had all been kidnapped. And I would hear a story of a man and he would be there working on a, a, a farm, an Aboriginal man, and he would be digging and he would hear his name and he would look up and there was an old tribal man there, an old, yeah, tribal Aboriginal man who would call him over and would tell him who he was and what his real name was and what his skin name was. And he'd tell him, come with me. And so the Aboriginal people at the time I was there were claiming their children back. And what they asked me was, could you help us with our kids? Can you see what's going on with our children? Look what's been done to us. So I was looking for exercises that would be um, activities that could be done at a gathering where young Aboriginal people could come together. And so we began um, having kids come to my backyard and kids, I mean like 
25, 30 year old kids. Um, and we would make boomerangs. We would play the didgeridoo and we would, we would all get together. So I was, I was engaged and, and, uh, and tracking was so intriguing because tracking is almost as old as what Tom's talking about. It's like the, in the beginning of time, Philip Deere used to say, people had to learn how this earth worked, what everything was, what it did. And so they had to pay attention and learn. And so they didn't do a ceremony, right? They, they had to use their wits. And so I thought, well, tracking will be a great uh, activity. And the other thing was nobody had any money. <laughs> so we had to find things that were free and things that uh, like dancing and singing and, and talking and, and, and tracking and making rope and cordage. And so that took me to the Tom Brown School where I wanted to learn more activities, more activities that I could bring back to the elders in Australia. And that led me to the tracker named Jimmy James. And he was the last great desert tracker who was, you know, super famous, nationally famous. And so I palled around with him. I learned more, learned more. And when I got back to the United States, uh, the editors of the Akwazasne Notes, they said, um, show, can you show our kids what you learned from those guys in Australia? And that was Peter Blue Cloud and, uh, and some others, uh, Danny Thompson, Lokwaho. And they took me to the Six Nations Museum and they introduced me to Ray Fadden. And, and Ray Fadden said, what are you gonna do with the kids? Let's do it here at the, at the museum. And I said, well, I'm gonna do shelter building and fire making and all these activities. And he laughed and he said, okay, okay, you don't have to convince me. He said, I already did what you're talking about in the 1930s. And he said, you see the chiefs and the clan mothers? Those are my kids, those are my campers. So in 1984, we did our first uh, Mohawk camp and Jake and Judy and Audrey Shenandoah and others came to see what we were doing and, and it grew and it grew. And then I even got to meet Tom Porter and his family because we were going to uh, Omega Institute for the Sacred Circle. They were doing gatherings and Jake Swamp and I began to do our thing together, which we called tracking the roots of peace. And that was the gathering that we brought to your uh, community, John, after we met. So what I saw and what I heard and the, the, the importance of what Tom has shared with us, that these were the words that were given at the beginning of time. And I saw uh, that that needed to come into my life and I needed to live by that principle too, because I, I so much believed in the peacemaker. I so much believed in the message of peace. And, and I wanted to follow that way. Even though I'm not on I was I was wanting those values. And uh, it seemed the way to begin was at the beginning with the, with the Oandum Kalewa Dekwa. And so it was um, that that led me to it, John. And I began to, you know, uh, study all the written uh, versions that there were, uh, transcripts of Tom speaking, transcripts of Jake speaking. Um, the book, The Wisdom Keepers, has a nice version by uh, Irving Paulus. And I would, I would learn that and study that. And what I, what I saw was it, le it leads to a, a clarity of mind. Uh, the words they are it's a it's a magical formula and if I may Tom uh, we we got together one time and and you looked at me and you said Mr. Stokes would you like to know the secret of life and I thought oh my god if, if Tom Porter's sharing the secret of life I want to get get me some so I walked over and and Tom whispered in my ear thank you and I came to see that that thank you, that feeling, that stance within the heart of a, of a person is the ground where we should be standing because from there, we're in a, a good way. We're aligned with nature, aligned with ourselves and, and, and from our heart come uh, waves of love that is a food for the world. 
And that's where I think we human beings really um, thrive is uh, when we're in a good place and we're feeding the world and we're actually useful to the world. We're not a, a pollution and we're not a pain in the behind, but we're actually something that's positive and useful. And so just to maybe wrap that thought form up, uh, in 1991, Jake Swamp had a feeling and he had a, a vision and he had many visions. And he looked at me one day while we were on Molokai and he said, it would be good if someone wrote the words of the Thanksgiving down in a form that others in the world could learn. He said, just a simple version. Uh, but he said, and then it should be translated into all the languages of the world. So that one day in the future, when the young people get together and one of them is asked to do the opening, they'll do the Thanksgiving address and all the others will say, that's the same thing I was going to say, and that they would find themselves united. And I, I really believed in that vision. And so I, I worked to um, make it come true. But I just want to say, I spent a long time putting that little book together because I knew how important it was and I knew how sacred it was and I sure didn't want to mess up. <laughs> But I think we've done a nice thing now. And, and uh, so I use it in my daily life and I use it to start every class. Uh, Jake said, don't never start a class without the Thanksgiving words. And I, and I have not since that time ever. And, uh, and my, my partner, uh, Lisa and I, when we're not together, we call each other on the phone and we take turns saying it to each other so that we can stay uh, right in our mind. And then we know what the other one's thinking. And we do that every day, no matter where, uh, when we're not together. And of course, when we are together, we can just go in the forest and do it. So it's a, it's a way of life, it's a way of being, it's a way of seeing. And even the elementary form that we do it, 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 it takes us to that beautiful place that Tom is sharing with us. Yeah, one one thing that that uh, it it reminds me a lot in a lot of new age teachings, a lot of people talk about setting your intention for whatever you want to do, whatever project you're creating or whatever. And the Thanksgiving address is a great way to set an intention of harmony and you know just being being in one with all of that exists around you. I think it's a you know by saying it you're creating that intention um and i can think of so many you know i think of uh it's interesting because you first wrote that book you you're, you first published that book in 1993 and that was also the time that uh was founded was in 1993 complete and you know you were off doing your thing and tommy and i were doing our thing and creating Gano Jahalege, and it just happened to all come together in that same year. Um, I thought that was a in, pretty little interesting coincidence that I noticed from when, that you had mentioned when you first published that book. Um, we, but that you know, one, I remember I, the first meeting I had with Tommy and everybody. I mean, you know, the Thanksgiving address was said. Every other meeting we ever had, that was said. And in every, everything we ever did at Gano Jahalege, that was said. And Ganujo Halege became this incredible place, you know. Uh, there was a P uh, youth and elder gathering at Ganandagan, and Pete Jemison would bring over different elders to speak. And again, we were creating a, a venue for the young people to come to a place where they could learn their culture and, and speak their language and dance their dances and, and bring the elders together with them. And uh, Tom was there many a time and Jake was there many a time and Huron Miller and all the, all the greats. Yeah, many people in um, one class, Tom wanted to teach them how to say and he went around <laughs> to every one of the kids, 65 kids. And he went around and stood in front of every person 
and he had them say it. And he had them say it, and he had them say it, and he had them say it. And I said it every time one of the kids said it. So I got really good at it by the end of that circle. <laughs> <laughs> and what Tom told us was when you wake up in the morning, you should say thank you because it's not a sure thing that you're going to wake up. There wasn't such a thing as sleep apnea at that time, but people would still pass in their sleep. And so he said, when you wake up and you just realize you're awake and you're still alive, you should say, and so when I wake up every morning, Tom, I say that every day. And I just would say in, for others, if you think of the infinite thought forms that you could have every day, the infinite directions that your mind could take every day, if you say that, creator, I send you my blessings, you, you put your mind in the groove, in the right place. And you don't end up on all the infinite pathways that you have to find your way back to the center. You begin um, in a good way. So that's kind of the way I integrate the things Tom and the other leaders would bring to the youth and elder gathering as I'm sitting there training the kids. I got to listen to all the teachings and I implemented them into my life. So it's so useful, so thankful, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's been really it's been really what i remember the first time i had ever heard the thanksgiving address is tommy when i had come up to aquasasting to bring those clothes up you know way back i think it was 1986 and i heard you you said it we you brought me to the to the um the social dance that that time I, I the first time i had come up and i heard you say it in mohawk which I didn't understand a word of what you said, but then you repeated it all in English, which was really wonderful. And uh, I thought, and I was just kind of, I was kind of blown away by it because from the, the teachings that I was living in a spiritual community at the time, and a lot of the teachings that um, from the arts, you might say spiritual guides that we were working with, we're saying that, you know, we're saying the same basic things. We're always talking about showing your appreciation for what exists all around you. In particular, the earth, air, fire, water, the elements, all these things. So it was a, it was another confirmation, like that you said, the original teachings. We were hearing them from a different source. And then when I heard you say that, it was like, oh, wow, that was a confirmation of the same teachings I was getting from a different source. And for me, um, one way I, like in the course of living, you hear all these different things, your beliefs and whatever, and you have take on all these teachings. And I think it's important to actually um, put them to the test and to see, and, and one way I do it is if I get that confirmation from many different sources, that that teaching has the same relevance to other people then it kind of clicks in with me and says yeah that's right because i'm getting it from this source and that source and this source and i think too if you look at any established religion or spiritual belief there is an element of appreciation in the things that they do but not to that extent that that the Haudenosaunee people have kept alive. And that's something that I, I really appreciate that you've been doing, Tommy, in particular, and the fact that you're willing to share all of that with us. So, um, one of the, uh, one thing I was wondering, um, you know, uh, if you could talk a little bit, um, again, uh, in these talks, um, if you could speak a little bit about the two-row wampum, in uh, this, which is uh, something that um, is that is the two row wampum, which is the very first agreement that the Haudenosaunee people made with the original Dutch settlers, and how that agreement has been renewed, was renewed many different times with different governments over the years. But if you could speak to that, because um, you might say one thing that I see right happening right now is this really good opportunity in 
happening in our country right now where, where everybody is look, realizes that things are not working and that we have to find a better way. Um, and right now with um, the, the woman who is Johnny, she's, she's a congressman from your state, I can't remember her name, who is now head of the Interior Department. So for the first time in the history of the United States, a Native American woman is in charge of the governance, how are, you might say, the relationship, that interaction between our white government and, and Native peoples, you know, in our, so if you could sp speak a little bit about the Turo Wampum and the meaning of that, because I see this time as a great opportunity to, to keep on bringing that alive more and more, and how we can actually begin to work together to make that more of a reality. Well, I can probably um, talk a little bit about it. Uh, the Just briefly. Turo Wampum. Anadagas and Seneca, Cayuga people, they call it Gaswanta. That's what they treaty that was made. They referred to it as Kaswanta in uh, Cayuga, Seneca, or Onondaga language. But in Oneida language and the Mohawk language, uh, uh, we understand Seneca and Onondagas and Cayuga, but their dialect is a little bit different we still can understand them. In the Mohawk, referred to that Turo Wampum and other treaties as uh, the Gaswateta. We call it the Gaswateta, any, any treaty. And if you literally take that word apart, uh, again, the Gaswateta, it means like um, anything uh, that shines light on an object so that you can see it clearly. That's what it means, the Gaswatita. So in the native world, mostly uh, it could be a light, it could be a flashlight, or it could be anything that sheds light. But for us, for the Noshone people, the Noshone people, when you say the Gaswatita, we don't think of a lamp really or a flashlight although it could be that, we think of the sun. Right away, we think of the sun because we call the sun our old brother, the Haswate Ta. That means he shines the light for the whole world, the Haswate Ta. So that's what we call treaties. So a treaty is a agreement between two different uh, nation of people. And it's an agreement of uh, how you make a friendship or a brotherhood, or how do you make a family strong, it basically is about. And so when you make your agreement, you agree to certain things, both sides, and then you have to, every little while, you have to, um, you have to dust it or polish it because dust will accumulate over years anything you do so you have to keep renewing it so every few years so with most of the treaties that were made with everybody there was an automatic uh, uh, time period where you're to renew those and for the Haudenosaunee people, uh, that's what our whole ceremonial cycles is about. Is that every year we renew everything. So we begin with the midwinter through the whole year until we end a cycle or circle. And then when we finish one cycle, which is one year, we call it... Uh, we begin again the New Year's or Midwinter Ceremony, which means we will build a new fire. 
we will put wood again in the fire to make it new so our life won't end. That's what we call it. So, um, the means that the sun shine so that all the facts is see you can see it. So whatever agreements we made will become known or seen easily and be clear between what we made agreements on. So that's why we call treaties the Gaswateta or Ayuga Anadaga Seneca um, says Gaswanta, which is the same word except that they say it different. The uh, Turo Wampum was made between the year of 1610 and 1620, or thereabouts. In between 1610 and 1620 are the actual years, um, somewhere in there. And the first one was made with the Dutch people. That's the first one, was the Dutch. And when the uh, first time, this is the way they are tell us over and over in our longhouses. So since I was a kid, I heard them say that over and over. That's why I don't forget. And uh, that's with everything of our teaching. It's always repeated. Every year you hear it again because they renew everything on a yearly basis. Everything's got to be renewed. So that's why when treaties were made with the United States or Great Britain or somebody, there's a, supposed to be a clause in there where you renew it. In fact, in some of them, it says they use the silver covenant chain, um, three, three links of silver chain uh, for its durability and its strength to be lasting. But they said that the silver tarnishes because of the air and it will tarnish and not be lustrous. And so because it tarnishes, it means that if we don't attend to each other's agreements and renew them, that it also will tarnish our relationships until now you can't see each other anymore and then trouble will come. And so the silver covenant chain, every, every time there's a new administration, like in the United States, every, I think if you have a new, new president, well, it's supposed to be every four years, that president is supposed to call our leaders of the Ludina Shoni to renew all the agreements that were made by George Washington and all other uh, presidents uh, to renew them so that there's no problem uh, to come. So basically the Turo Wampum was the first uh, agreement, the European. We had other agreements with the Lakotas or Dibwes before that, before the United States or European came here. But the Turo Wampum is the first one we meet with European people between 1610 and 1620. Now first, the way our elders tell us in our longhouse, the way I remember, they said, the European wants to have an agreement. Dutch. And at first, the European, uh, he says, in the agreement, uh, we are gonna be the fathers and the Ludenoshuni people will be the children in the agreement. And so the Ludina Shuni people said, no, uh, that's not acceptable because a father can reprimand his children any time. And uh, we don't want that. So then the Dutch people said, well, okay, then how about we will be your uncle? And then you, the little Shuni, will be our nieces and nephews. And our leaders that time said no, because there's no difference between an uncle and a father. They, ha they have the same duty to reprimand their nephews, the same as a father does 
to his sons and daughters. Want that kind. So then the Ludhanasuni leaders stood up and they said, if we are to have an agreement, we can be brothers and we will be of the same height. We will not be taller and you will not be taller than us, but we will be at the same equal height. And that's the kind of agreement we will have as brothers. So then they said, okay, and if I will make an example of our relationship, it will be like on a river. And you, the Dutch people, we see you, you have a big ship that sails on the big water. And us indigenous people, the Nashoni people, we have a canoe, it's smaller than your vessel on the same river. And so you will have in your vessel, your people and your way of looking at the world and uh, your laws and your names and your language and all that, and your law. And in our canoe, we have our leaders and our way of governance and our beliefs and our language and our people in there. And we will go on the same river side by side, the ship and the canoe down the river as a brothers. And you will never jump in our canoe to steer where our canoe goes. And our people will never jump in your ship to steer your ship where it's going to go tomorrow. That means that we will never interfere with each other's jurisdiction. We will never boss or make authority on each other. But we will have a choice as we go as brothers into the future. And if we do that, then that will secure that there will be harmony and peace as long as we do that. And then the Dutch said, well, we need to write that down, document it. And so the Indian says, well, you can write it down if you want to, but we don't do it that way because it can burn up and it can be erode, eroded. We use wampum, the hokohog shell, purple and white, to record big uh, pledges and promises or agreements. And so they made the call the two-row wampum, and you'll see it. It's got a black background with two white roads on there, representing the two canoes, the two boats. And then the Dutch, and then the Haudenosaunee, Haudenosaunee people said, this is how we record things. So it won't burn up, it, it stays, it, don't, it doesn't erode. And he said, um, so the Dutch said, okay. And so they presented from the Europe, a pipe. And it's got a round thing on it, fancy pipe. And it's got a chain on it. It's called silver combinate chain. And he added that on there. He said, and then every few years, we will polish that. Meaning that if there's any trouble between us, we will meet together as brothers and we will rectify any misunderstandings so that peace will prevail between us. Later on, that's when it came that every time the United States inherited those agreements, and then also the British and the French, besides the Dutch. So in the United States' case, every time there's a new president, our old leaders said they're supposed to invite our leaders to meet together somewhere to polish and to polish the silver chain so no tarnish will come our misunderstanding in our relationship of peace. And so about, about that, that we will not impose each other's law on each other, but there will be two equal brothers 
in law, international. And that's what the Gas the Gaswateta is about. And so what I just told you is the word in Rio, uh, the Gaswateta, I mean, I have clarified, so now it can be understood, that relationship. But the United States has never really worked Washington's time to include or to come uh, to continue the shaking of hands and to show the real brother brother uh, brother agreement. Yet. So no president has ever done that. No, None. no. Uh, but George Washington did do that because he needed the help at the at the time because of the British and all that. But yeah. he did try to do that and so on. And uh, but after after that anymore. And so also, our leaders, just, just what, I, what I remember is that um, whenever we have a new leaders here to uh, put up new leaders because somebody died and the clan mothers put new lead chiefs up, they're supposed to notify Washington of the new, new leadership too. And uh, I think that we still do that uh, by, by letter form, yeah. but I'm not even sure of that. If mm -hmm. They do. Not, they used to do that, according to whatever the elders talk. So there's a lot of things that needs to be fixed too, that has not been attended to, on both sides. Mm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's, that's something that I hope these talks might might enable, you know, us white folks that are all out here to start thinking about that. You know, we're all in this together. Um, yeah. And we all we have to learn to accept our differences and work together, because we're That's at why a there's dire people. place where we That's the the old ways of, of doing things are not going to save the pro save the problems that we have right now. Uh, what did Einstein say? Is you can't you can't fix a problem by using the same method that's got you there. Um, I really you know there's no technology that's going to get us out of the fix we're in. It's going to take much more than just technology, and that really starts by changing our hearts and minds. So with these talks, as we move forward, I would really hope that we could help folks get inspired to reignite this, and especially with the fact that, Tommy, Johnny, what's the, what's the woman's name that, that, that's your congressman that is running the interior? Deb Holland. Yeah. She's from Laguna, Pueblo. Yeah. Yeah. And probably with her as the Secretary of the Interior, it's a good time to put forward things that need to uh, be reinstated. Yeah, might be a good time. Um, a, a, a note, if I may, uh, regarding, since our, our topic is the, the, the opening, the Thanksgiving, um, you know, one of the things that happens now with the cultural appropriation and people are so worried that if they do the opening, um, they're going to be guilty of appropriation. And I have to reassure them that when Jake, and of course, you know, uh, Tom was in on the process of the book and uh, how we put it together and, and uh, it was put out with their uh, good wishes and their good graces. When somebody gives you something, you can't steal it from them because it was given to you as a gift. And uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Tom, well, he showed you the manuscript that I had put together and there was one entry that you thought was too close to your heart. And you asked if we could take it out. You weren't really ready to share that with the world yet. And so we took it out. And, uh, and that was part of the process was that I put together a version of the words based on all the existing versions that were there. And then that was run by a, a board of uh, Mohawk speakers. And uh, Tom had his say, Jake had his say. Lokwaho came to me and he said, um, you said this in English, but we can't even say that in Mohawk. We don't have words for that. So I said it like this. And this is how you would translate that into English. So I changed my English to match the Mohawk. So by the time we were done, 
John Fadden put his drawings together. And then Lokwaho did a beautiful Mohawk translation. So when we put the book out, it was a real um, team effort. And it was sanctioned by Mohawk people. Uh, and so I told people, you're not appropriating anything. This was offered to you as a, as a gift. So just to go a little further, if I may, um, I think this, what, what the Onkwe Honwe did with the Thanksgiving address, taking something so precious and so sacred and so from the beginning of time and offering it to the world, even in the most simplistic fashion, but that's enough for us. That's enough yeah. for us people who are not Onkwe Honwe to give us a taste of it, to help us understand there's another way of thinking, another way of being. And even that's enough for us. We don't have to give away everything, right? To share. And I just want to note to everybody that um, the, the, the Iroquois people have started the process and shared something very sacred to them with all of us because they thought it would be good for us. So when we worked with the people of the earth, the four people of the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta in Colombia, we got together with some of the priests and one night and, uh, and I shared with them the book and it was in Spanish and Mohawk. And uh, they took it and they looked at it and they didn't say anything. There were five of them. And then they held on to it for a week. And then they came back and there was a gathering and they said, so where's the guy who gave us that little book? And I kind of sheepishly raised my hand and they said, we want you to know that we read your book and we like it. We, we believe in it and everything in your book is alive and everything in your book has rights and everything in your book needs to be defended. And we, and we thank you for that book. And I said, maybe you guys have something you'd like to share with the world, maybe just some small piece of your culture and, and that would be helpful to all of us as a human family. And I said, I would help them, you know, do that if that was so. Because one of the wise women, the sagas of the, of the four peoples had had a dream and it was similar to a dream I had had and I saw all the people of the world coming together and all the cultures of the world were sharing their most precious thing with the rest of the human family for the good of mankind. And I, I see that's the way to go, not to close up, but to, to open. And, when, and only sharing what you need to, not, not, you don't have to give away the farm, just a little taste. Again, just to say thank you to, to Tom and to the Onkwe Honwe because they really have started the process, you know? It's, it's admirable. Johnny, could you, do you have any of the books there that you could show folks? I just happened to have some. <laughs> I, uh, I also believe uh, if everybody doesn't know, uh, we should talk about Tom's book also uh, and give the title to everyone on the program so that they can get that. Um, and in Tom's book, he mentions that we've got these books in all the different languages. And he uses a phrase that I think is so important that the book is a skeleton key to open the spirituality of all the other religions because it's amazing, Tom, when I share this in any country I go, the oldest person, man or woman, will come up to me and say, we have something very much like that in our culture. They always say that. And they said, we don't do it enough anymore. Like even an example in Tahiti. And I gave it to just the girl who was on the front desk at our, at our hotel. And she came back to me the next day and she said, that little book you gave me is so beautiful. She said, but we need it in Tahitian. We don't like to speak French. <laughs> They're the colonizers, right? So I said, do, do the translation for me. She said, you know, we cut, the, we cut the, the log down to make the va'a, to make the canoe. 
but we used to thank the tree, but we've forgotten. We need to remember that again. So the book is just this amazing um, door opener. So I've got them here. Here's the, uh, the English was where we started with uh, the, in 1993. And we went to the German, the Worte des Dankes, and each time we have a, a translator from the country um, and, you know, we go through the process and have lots of different readers. And, um, and we were working with the Sami people in Sweden and Oren was over there with them also. And uh, so the next one was a guy named Juran. He translated it into Swedish and that's the Tax Egelsen. And then it was like, okay, well, we live here in New Mexico we really ought to have one in Spanish. So our friend Paz, who's a, 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 a Pura Pecha Indian and a, and a, a dancer uh, of the Azteca tradition, he translated it into Spanish. Agradecimientos. Our girls from Japan uh, not only translated it into Japanese, but they started a, 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 a ceremony uh, and a festival based on Thanksgiving that became very popular in Kyoto. And then our, our web weaver was from the Visayan Islands in the Philippines. So she wanted to do Pagpa Salamat. And then we were working in Brazil and a guy translated that, Palavras de Agradecimiento. And then of course we had to do the French for the Tahitians because I fell in love with Tahiti. <laughs> and um, there's 19 countries in Africa speak French, Tom. And so I was laughing. I said, well, this is global domination in reverse because we're taking over those countries with um, Thanksgiving <laughs> <laughs> and Mohawk. Um, our friend from Hawaii wanted to do it. And so this is Ha'i Olelo Ho'omaika'i. Mickey uh, did it in Hawaiian. Uh, we did it in Italian, and the last one that we did uh, was at the request of uh, Sandy Big Tree and the people at Onondaga who were hosting uh, Team Israel for a lacrosse tournament, and they asked if we had one in, uh, in Hebrew, and we didn't, and so they helped us put one together. So this was our, our last edition, so that's 11 languages. Nice. So, and these are all available from uh, the Tracking Projects, you know, website, and you'll find them all over the place because they, they sell them in lots of um, native bookstores and the National Museum of the American Indian and, and all that. Nice. Lots of languages to go. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, well, if anybody has any questions, if you want to type them into me, I'll, I'll read them off to, to any of these folks. Um, or this, right now, there's a few people on. I could even unmute you if you have something you want to say. But Faye, I want to thank you, Tom, for doing this, and you, Johnny, for taking the time. Um, I know it's something that, you know, with COVID and everybody stuck inside, and Tommy, I know you've been wanting to, you haven't been able to travel much and, and talk to folks the way you used to before. That I was hoping that all these talks would give you a chance to, to get out to people the things that you really feel are important. So, well, I don't see any questions coming up. Do you have, oh, go ahead, Rick, go ahead. <laughs> Can I just say this, John? I, I, I want to say to everybody and also to Tom, I, uh, I study, I study the Haudenosaunee, I study the peacemaker, I study the teachings and, and I practice, you know, the words and, and I just keep learning um, more and more and more. And I just wanted to say this, I don't think I've had a chance to tell Tom, but I work with somebody who's in uh, permaculture. His name is Joel Glansberg. And and one of the things that we do is we teach a class that's about permaculture and tracking because both sciences deal with uh, patterns and pattern recognition. And when the, the Thanksgiving is done, 
the way I was introduced to it by, by uh, Tom's people, when we stand around the fire and when there's a speaker and then when the speaker speaks and we all give our, our, our mana, our thoughts to the speaker, and then he says to and throws them up to the creator, there's a, a, a model going on that's very um, unique and very powerful. And, and, and it was actually Tom who put the thought in my mind because he said, this is an indigenous laser beam. Yeah, it was a long time ago. But laser stands for light amplification through the stimulation of emitted radiation, right? Mm -hmm. And Tom was explaining to us that when we take our blessings and we pack them, pack them, pack them, pack them so tight, layer upon layer upon layer, and then throw them up, it creates a, 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 a force field. So one of the patterns of nature is the circle. And another pattern is concentric circles, which is all the people standing behind us and our relations and the spirits. And, and then when we throw it up, it creates a cylinder. And that cylinder has power because it's packed so tight. And so it's indigenous science of the highest degree. And then it's got a, a logic to who's going to climb the ladder, the people, where shall we stand the ladder on the earth? And then what do we encounter as we go higher and higher? So there's an order to it that actually brings someone's mind. It, it crystallizes it into a form. And I just think it's, it's some of the highest science that I've encountered in the world is the Oendo Kaliwadekwa. It's remarkable. Thank you for letting me rhapsodize. Yeah. Uh, Lisa has a question. Lisa, can you hear, can you want to ask your question? Sure. Um, first of all, thank you. Thank you. And just so, so was brought to tears in hearing that particular version of how Thanksgiving address, how the words that come before us were, are introduced. I mean, that's just like, so, of course, as a mother <laughs> and, you know, my children not having that kind of introduction, it just feels like, well, what do you think can you do when you're older? I mean, could you like take your children and literally do, because I'm, I'm like, I want to take them like today out there and, you know, just, I mean, they have done the Thanksgiving address, but never in a way that it was about I, what what I my mind feels stretched to that it wasn't only just thank you but it's a it, these are promises and agreements and and the way that you should be engaging and you know the protocol and the right of of what what are just kind of even what you were talking about in the wampum I was like it was interesting because I was thinking that's what you're doing in the very beginning the first impression the first track in a baby's mind is is this, this is your way that you will engage with everyone and all these people and all of these, you know, aspects of creation and they should be honored. And so, yeah, can you do it later in life? I guess is the question. You want me to answer, talk that, uh, reply to that? Yeah. yeah. If you could, Tommy, yeah. Uh, no, if your kids are already growing and 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 you and one did not do that at sure, then you can set a, an appointment or with them, your grown children, if they're already grown up, and you say, I miss doing this. I didn't know they were supposed to be doing this. I say, I would like to do it now. And then you explain to them, even though they're grown, can we start over again? But make pretend you were little, little, little baby yet, <laughs> and we do it, and then it, it'll still grow. It'll, it'll st still find, and it'll be very meaningful to them, even if they're grown. It'll even be more meaningful to them. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, thank you. That's yeah, never too late to make it good. <laughs> yeah. 
Anyone else got a question? Okay, well, I would like to thank everybody for coming tonight. And thank you, Johnny and Tommy for, for doing this. And I just thank the universe and the creator for allowing this all to happen. I will, I have recorded this, I will edit it, edit it down, and I will be putting it out on YouTube. Uh, Paul, Tommy Paul said he's going to be able to put it out on the Ghana Johalege website. So it'll be available there. And I will be putting it out on my YouTube channel, which is uh, Sakara777. Um, and I will, it's S-A-K-A-R-A-777. on you, It's on a YouTube tube channel. Um, and I can send that to, uh, maybe there's a way I can send it to everybody that's on this. I'll figure that out. Because actually, this is the first time I've actually used Zoom in this way. So... I'll have to figure out how all this stuff works. So, but anyway, thank us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Tommy. And everyone have a good evening. Ona. Ona. Thank you. Tommy. Yama. Yama. <laughs> Yama. Thank you, John. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.